The aim of multivariate calculus is to take concepts of two-dimensional calculus such as rates of change with derivatives or area under the curve with the integrals and translate that to a three-dimensional space. So now that we want to look at these same concepts on a three-dimensional object, now that can be very difficult to visualize at times. And so what I want to do is look at two somewhat common multivariate calculus questions, one dealing with derivatives, one dealing with integrals, and show how Wolfram's Mathematica is a great way not only to solve these questions, but to help students visualize what we're looking at. So let's get started. All right, so here's my first question. This relates to derivatives on a 3D surface. And so we're saying if z is this expression x cubed y is 6 minus 3x squared y cubed, where x is sine 2t and y is cosine 3t, we want to find dz dt when t equals pi over 4. What does this mean? Okay, so we have a 3D surface, and this dz dt is measuring a rate of change in the z direction with variable t. And we want to find what that is when t equals pi over 4. Now, there is no t in here with the z expression. The t shows up with my x and y coordinates. We'll get into more details about that in a little bit. First, I want to show what we mean by the derivative dz dt. So in two-dimensional calculus, we consider the tangent line to help us find the rate of change, and we call that a derivative. But in a three-dimensional service, a tangent line well, there are actually a lot of tangent lines, and it depends on which direction we're approaching this three-dimensional surface. And so for that, we need more than just a derivative. We need what we call partial derivatives. So the partial derivative with respect to x would give us the rate of change along this three-dimensional surface in the x direction, whereas the partial derivative with respect to y would give us the rate of change when we're advancing in the y direction. And so we use these vectors to actually help us find the directional derivative in a given direction. And the funny thing is, is we can actually create a tangent plane and see that all of our tangent vectors will lie on the same tangent plane. Now this question in particular takes this idea even further because now my x and y coordinates are parameterized with a value of t. So when I plug in different values of t, they generate, based on these equations, different x, y coordinates that get, then get fed into this three-dimensional surface. Now, what does that look like? That's hard to visualize, and this is where I got lost as a student and where I see a lot of my students getting lost. And that's why I want to show how Mathematica can help us visualize exactly what this question is talking about. So I defined z and x and y, and to visualize what we're talking about, we need to first consider the x and y direction. So just in two dimensions, what do we have? And since this is a parametrically defined function that we have, we're going to use parametric plot. And I always advise to use the outside in writing style when we're using Mathematica, because if I'm just trying to write from left to right like I normally do, then I'm going to get confused at the end where all these parentheses and brackets are supposed to go. So if I just go ahead and close my brackets and then go on the inside and write what I need, it cuts down on the confusion. So for example here, we're writing parametric plot, and since I have more than one function, I need to list them out. I'm going to have x of t and y of t, and I'm going to let t run from 0 to 2 pi. And then I'm going to add a plot style where I'm making this particular plot red and bold and with thickness. So this plot represents my x and y coordinates that we have going on here. Now, how does that relate to this three-dimensional surface? And this is where students get lost. They see this but we don't understand how does that relate to the rate of change of z with respect to t. Now, another thing is with these parametric plots, it's hard to see where the beginning point in this is, and Mathematica is good helping out with that as well. And I won't go into the details of this manipulate plot here, except that we're running from 0 to s, my value of t, and this will allow me to trace through to see exactly how this parametric curve is forming. Right, so when t is pi over 4, we're right about here at this endpoint, and I want to know on my three-dimensional surface, when t is pi over 4, what's my rate of change there with respect to t. Now I'm going to graph the three-dimensional function, and I'm using plot 3D inside-outside writing style here. And so all I need to do is graph z of x, y, and I'm running from negative 1.1 and 1.1, both in the x and y direction. Now the rest of it is just visual. I'm, adding, I'm taking out the mesh, I'm putting in a cool southwest colors color function, and I have a plot range, I want my z direction to go from negative 4 to 4. And you notice the plot range here is a list 
with lists inside. This first one is my X list. This is the X range that I'm going to plot over. Then secondly, the Y range. And then lastly, the Z range, which I went from negative 4 to 4. Aspect ratio is going to make my graph in a perfect box. And I want to label my axes. And there's my three-dimensional function. All right, so that's what Z looks like. Okay, now I'm still confused. How does Z relate to my parametric plot? So that's what we're going to do. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to label this plot A. And I'm going to make another parametric plot, but this time parametric plot 3D, where my X coordinate is X, my Y coordinate is Y, and my third coordinate is Z with X of T in for the first variable and Y of T in for the second variable. I want T go from 0 to 2 pi. And I want my plot style red and bold again. Okay, I'm seeing a little bit more of how my two-dimensional plot relates to this three-dimensional plot. Because look, there's my parametric plot. I'm going to bend it this way. This is kind of my three-dimensional plot. And I'm going to show both of these together like this. I'm going to let that be B. And now I just have to say show A and B. And it'll put them on top of each other. And there it is. We're walking along this pathway with um, X and Y functions of T. And they are related to this three-dimensional surface as well. So now when I'm talking about the derivative of z with respect to t, we said t, when t is pi over 4, we're kind of down over here somewhere. So on this 3D surface, how quickly is my z direction changing when t is pi over 4? So around like that. Now an application you might find with this is that maybe this is some sort of walking track we're walking on. And the z function is temperature over our time. Here what I'm saying dz dt when t is pi over 4, which is down here somewhere. How quickly is my temperature changing at that moment? All right, that's what we're trying to do. Students see these types of questions when we're learning about chain rule in three-dimensional variables. Mathematica doesn't really need all that. All we have to do is say, look, I want to take the derivative of the z function, where z has a x of t coordinate and a y of t coordinate. And I want to take that with respect to t. There is the derivative. That's what you would do if you worked out the calculus. If I want to evaluate that when t is pi over 4, I say slash dot t approaching pi over 4. And I want this a numerical value. So I'm going to wrap this in the n function. And there it is. The rate of change in the z direction at pi over 4 is 11.7959. Now, if you're doing this by hand to find dz dt, you would have to employ the chain rule. So your dz dt would actually be del z del x, which is the partial derivative of z with respect to x, times dx dt plus del z del y, partial derivative of z with respect to y times dy dt. And then once you do that, you plug in the value t equals pi over 4, and you're going to get the same answer. Now for question 2, we want to evaluate this double integral over domain d of some sort of function where d is bounded by y equals x plus 1 times x minus 3 and y equals negative x squared. Okay, now this is a confusing question for students as well because we're talking about a three-dimensional object that we're integrating over, but then we also have this bounded region. And how do those compare to one another? And I feel like a lot of times I didn't understand how the two related, and my students can get lost with this as well. And once again, Mathematica is a great tool to visualize what's going on here. So first I'm going to define the function that we're integrating, this h, x, y. When I'm doing a double integral, what does that mean exactly? So in two-dimensional calculus, we use the integral to find the area under the curve. And that has tons of applications, such as finding probability, finding the center of balance, finding the hydraulic force on an object. Now, in three-dimensional space, though, we don't try to find the area under the curve. We're trying to find the volume of some sort of shape. So like the volume of this box here, where it's kind of got this parabolic dent in the top. The volume under this is very difficult. But if I can divide it up into some easier shapes to calculate volumes of, such as rectangular prisms, here I have four rectangular prisms. I think I can calculate that volume pretty easily. And if I add in more rectangular prisms, the more I add, the more accurate this estimate becomes. And actually, in calculus, we can take the limit of the number of rectangular prisms we're going to have to go to infinity, and we'll get the exact volume that we were trying to calculate in the beginning.
Now this visual is nice, but it doesn't help us with the question that we're looking at because the base is bounded just by a square. But in this question two, the base is not bounded by a square, it's bounded by this particular region. So I wanna show you how to visualize that. Now I think the first thing that would make sense for us to do here, since we're trying to figure out what, how this base changes the question, is to visualize the base itself. So I'm gonna use the plot function. I'm not doing plot 3D. I'm gonna plot this base, which is made up by x plus one and x minus three multiplied together that's my first function, and then negative x squared. And I'm gonna evaluate this from negative one and two. Okay, so I get these two overlapping parabolas, and you gotta imagine that there's this three-dimensional figure hanging on top of this thing, and we're trying to calculate that volume. And we'll visualize what that looks like in a little bit. But what I need to know to actually solve this question, where do these two curves intersect each other? And actually that's a pretty easy thing to figure out because we can just say solve x plus one times x minus three. And since this is an equation, I need to say equals equals. If I just said equals negative x squared, then I'm gonna create some sort of weird memory problem in Mathematica. I'd probably just get an error statement. I don't wanna risk it. I'm just gonna say double equals to let Mathematica know I'm talking about an equation, comma x. So when I solve this equation for x, there are my solutions. And those are the two points where these curves are intersecting each other. Okay, so that would be helpful in a little bit. So now let's do our 3D plot. And what I wanna do is graph h, x, y. I'm gonna let x go from negative one to two again. And my y, just looking at this graph, I think we can go from negative five to one. Let's go ahead and take out our mesh. Let's see what we get here. Okay, so this is our 3D function. And this is what students can visualize pretty easily. But now I gotta figure out how does that relate to this base. And I can do that in Mathematica using something called region function. And region function is a very cool function to add into your 3D plot. So I'm gonna have a region function. And the way I put in my base is I use the function function. So I create a, a pure function of variables x, y, and z. And just looking at my graph here, the blue curve is on the bottom. So I'm gonna start with that. I want x plus one, x minus three. And what I'm really trying to say is that I want my y to be between x plus one times x minus three and negative x squared. So to do that, I use less than or equal to y, less than or equal to negative x squared. Now I'm gonna hit shift enter, there it is. There's my 3D function carved over that particular base. Now, I want to actually visualize the volume, so just let me add in a few things. And now when I evaluate, aha, I got these cool colors, and I've also got the filling in there, so you can see exactly what we're trying to calculate the volume of. It's not just a rectangular bottom, but you can see why we have to specify our bounded region in the integral. Okay, now a little details on what I added in. Uh, I, I took out the mesh, we already had done that. I used the color function again, I used neon colors, and there's a lot of built-in colors you can use. I did filling down to the axis. I did a filling style that's blue with 50% opacity. Here's my region function. I put a boundary that's blue and thick, so that just puts a blue thick boundary around my function. And I did a plot range to make sure that the Z height was what I wanted up to 50. And again, remember plot range, you have a list. The first list is my X's or my X's. The second list are my Y's. The third one are my Z's. And I put in an axes label and I put the aspect ratio of one. So I get this nice box. But I think that's a pretty cool plot right there. Hopefully this gives students a good visualization of what we're actually trying to cal calculate the volume of. Okay, now how would you actually do that? In Mathematica, this is pretty easy except that I would need to know my limits in the y direction, but we already solved for where these two things intersect, so that makes it easy for us. I'm gonna integrate h of xy, and this is first integrating the y value first, so I'll list it last, and it's evaluating from that bottom parabola up to the top parabola, and then in the x direction, that's going from one half one minus square root seven to one half one plus square root seven, we figured out those numbers by solving where these two things integrate. So in other words, we're going from the y direction from the bottom parabola up to the top, and the x direction from this value all the way over to this value. And that gives us our bounded region, and we're integrating the z function over that region, and there's our solution. 
And that's really exactly how you would do it on paper as well, just not as not with the neat visualization we have here. I hope these concepts make sense and I hope you, you can see that Mathematica is a great tool to use to visualize and to accomplish high level mathematics. If you have any questions, please let me know. You can leave a comment or you can reach out to me and thank you for watching.